want to show you something. Last time we left off, we had the uh, retainer with the correct preload spacer. Now we're going to go ahead and put that little puppy together. But I want to show you what we're doing here is we're actually using a 10 inch gear, uh, which is generated on a 10 inch drawing, but still measures only nine and a half inch wide. The reason we like to do that is if you look at the size of the teeth, this is basically 200 thousandths width. These are both 429 ratios and this is 300 thousandths. So you can tell that this is going to be a lot stronger. This particular application is going to end up in a pro mod. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that. We also have a 1350 yoke, which is this, this one is going to use. We offer also a 1480 and there's the two U-joint sizes. Looks pretty small when you compare the two, but that is actually a 1350. I always like to stone the face of the yoke and to sand here so that you get any sharp edges off and any high spots, okay? The pinion has been wire wheeled on the threads and cleaned of course here. And again, I like to stone the pinion nut so that when I put it on, everything's nice and flat. We're gonna need green Loctite, blue Loctite, red Loctite, some white grease, sealer, and of course lube. All right, and a little acetone. Always acetone. Clean that little puppy. So we have no oil residue. I'm gonna use one drop of red Loctite on each when we install it so that the bearing itself doesn't spin on the shaft. Just smear it around nice and even. And what you wanna do is save some of your old races because they actually make excellent little tools for installing bearings. Get everything centered. You don't want to take a chance of bending your pinion. And just double check. Now we're going to clean the stem itself. Like I say, we've already wire wheeled the threads. Same thing with the pinion nut. Put a nice little bead of oil in here. Don't get any on the inside of the bearing race. And get a nice little bead around her. Okay, so we're going to put our seal in here. Load your seal up with some white grease. Smear it around the inside diameter of your front pinion bearing. And also on the pinion stem where she's going to set. I don't like this one to spin either because when you let off the gas, this pinion tends to come forward or back towards the uh, ring gear and you end up spinning this. And what happens is it'll either eat into your yoke or eat into your shim and we'll change your preload. Get her lined up with the splines of the yoke. You don't want to stop because that Loctite is going to set up. Fill this cavity up with uh, some silicone so that there's no leaks. I've actually seen gear lube walk past the splines and actually wrap all the way around the pinion threads and drip. Also on stock units where the yoke is loose this will squeeze in there and give it a little cushion and you won't wear, if you've ever done a lot of nine inches, you'll see that they actually wear where the uh, 
which blind hits the yoke because the yoke is so much softer than the uh, pinion. Okay. Now, we're going to use two drops of blue. Okay. One on each side. I'm going to do one nice drop in there. And then the super glue, which is the green. I just put one drop on there. We've got this pinion preloaded now. We're sitting in between 17 and a half and 20 inch pounds, which is actually very, very nice. A lot of people like to squash those bearings and really put a lot of preload in there. And that's all fine and dandy, but that preload's going to dissipate as you drive the car. And so when you put a couple passes on here, this is going to have basically no preload left at all because the bearing is going to seat in. So you can either go ahead and preload it to 30 or whatever you want, but the fact of the matter is, it's just going to create additional wear to eliminate that preload. So 17 and a half would be probably about a minimum assembled like this. 20 is totally tolerable. After you get into the 25, 30, I don't like that. So just keep it at 17 and a half. 20 and your pinion assembly is together. Stone the flange and the, and the ring, so there's no high spots. Ring gear bolts, I've already wire wheeled the threads. So there's no junk on them. Of course I walked in a solvent tank also. These happen to be a uh, half inch in size. We do uh, the ring gear has a 7 16 or a half inch hole. We're going to torque these puppies down to 120 foot pounds. And again, we're going to use acetone. Now that your ring gear is soaked, dump her out. Okay, so we're going to bolt this ring gear on here. I like to put a little bit of oil on the inside diameter of the ring gear itself so it can help slide on the locating portion of the spool. That way you don't create any little chips that will give you a run out. Put a little dab on the spool also. One drop of blue Loctite in each hole. Each hole that you're going to use, by the way. This is the half inch ones. Bring your leg down on your vise and drop that spool down in there. Get all your bolts started. You want to tighten it down in a crisscross. Get these things snugged up till they're just about ready to start pulling. Tighten it down nice and snug. You just watch your gap, try and keep it fairly even so you don't shave any material. <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to start with uh, 50 pounds. up to around 80. Don't stop once you get started because that Loctite will set up on you. And you go to your final torque and this one is a half inch. So it's 120. And I always like to double check. It, and I don't like to leave my wrench real high on the torque. It's the Y M C A. Bingo.